welcome back to Road to October. This is my weekly series where I take my journey between now and Halloween. This is episode number eight. We're back from MHC and we're actually going to start building something this week. Holy crap, I've actually started on the elevator today. Can you believe it? Um, so I decided that we're going to do a uh, five by five footprint. It's uh, a foot bigger on both sides than I really wanted it to be, but it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be necessary. Just by the time you count for the walls and everything, it's just going to be uh, too, too crowded if it was only four by four. So, um, so we're doing five by five. And uh, I got these two C-section pieces here that make up the base and that was I cut that out of uh, one four by eight sheet of plywood um, here I'll show you how I did that and the reason why I did that put my foot on here is so I could get um just so I could get it out of a four by eight sheet so basically I cut it like this see that So that's how I was able to get these two sections to make a five by five. So this was 60, oops, 60, 60 inches here and 30 inches from there to there. So that gave me my five by five. So anyway, yeah. So um, I got the airbags mounted here. I'll show you how these little boards here just basically keep it from, uh, you know, from the, if the bags were to slip out or anything, they're actually bolted in. And uh, I got to bolt this last one in here right now. So basically all it is, I took my cut off of uh, one of these holes here and that will give me my center point. I got a board underneath here. Okay, I'm going to take the carriage bolt. And these just have the single hole on the bottom of it, so that will go right like so. And there we go. Now, uh, now we can start building the framework for the, uh, the I guess it'd be the floor, and uh, go from there. I had laid this out in AutoCAD already. Just. Uh, Give me a mind frame of where everything else. This is the one I just scribbled on the back of with all the doors and everything. So anyway, next we'll get onto the floor. So I'd say this is a pretty productive day. I think I started this at uh, about four o'clock and it's now 7.30 at night. We got the, uh, the base done. We got the bags mounted. We got the floor constructed. Um, these little plates here are just temporary. Um, it, it would be the entire floor that the, uh, the bags would be mounted to. I just did these little squares right now just so I could um, I'm going to, I'm going to hook up the uh, airlines and everything and fire this up and see how this reacts. Um, I already noticed right away that if I stand on it here, it bottoms out, which I don't think it's supposed to, um, bottom out the bags anyway, but, um, I don't want, to, I don't want people to be inside the elevator and being able to feel it, you know, hit the ground, you know, bottom out. I want to keep that cushion of air constantly going so I may be able to do that just with um, you know programming it and keeping the uh, keeping the bags <coughs> inflated and everything but anyway that's it for today um, I'm pretty pleased with how this is going so far so good nothing too major hookups hiccups hookups hiccups hookups on the hiccups got a little off on the hole here for the uh, the fittings but um, I try to make it big enough so I get a socket over it but We'll have to modify that a little bit, but all in all, I'm pretty pleased. So that's it for today. Next, we'll, um, I think we're going to start messing with the uh, air cylinders or the uh, solenoid valves and all that stuff. So for the doors on the elevator, um, I was traveling for work and I stopped by Home Depot and was just kind of cruising around. And 
they had these two um, slabs, these door slabs. Normally I wouldn't buy these things, but they only won $25 for these slabs. And what was nice about them is they're not machined for hinges or any type of uh, lock set or anything. So they're just that, they're just strictly slabs. And so I thought these were gonna work out pretty well for a, for a blank slate, you know, to, uh, to start with. Um, I also found uh, these are just regular, you know, um, sliding closet door tracks. I think they're like, I don't know, $13 a piece or something like that for the entire kit. I couldn't beat that. I mean, you know, I was thinking about ways of trying to figure out how to um, make something, but I mean, for $13, you can't really beat that. So um, that's kind of what we're going to use for the, uh, the doors on this thing. So here's an idea I had. So I'm going to use that 37-inch monitor um, to display the video of, you know, going down the elevator shaft. Well, we're cleaning out some stuff, and I had this old um, baby gate here that uh, I thought if I take, you know, the wood and everything off, just use the grate itself and paint it up looking like old rusty metal, that looked like a cool little, like, screen type thing to put over the monitor. Something, you know, just a little add, added effect. But uh, I thought that was a, a good way to uh, recycle that old thing. I just had an idea for the floor for the elevator. Let me show you. So back in the day, I used to make these um, arcade cabinets called the Game Raider. And we used to put on the outside, we used um, plastic laminate. And I still have this whole sheet of um, plastic laminate. It's five foot by 12 foot. And it's kind of like this, um, metallic gray it's it's kind of like a like a brushed metal type texture to it that's gonna be perfect for the uh for the floor um i'm gonna cut it up into like sections and kind of like patch it together and uh, i think that's gonna work really good and i got plenty of the material for it so that's gonna be great um the other thing i was telling you about the um the baby gate screen over the the monitor there's the uh the monitors i have right there there's i got two of them facing fa back to back um, one of them definitely works. The other one I've never even plugged in, so I'm assuming it works, but uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, we got the, uh, the floor figured out. Um, we got the monitor situation figured out. I also had another idea for the, um, the wall paneling on the inside of the elevators. I can't show you that until uh, I go to work tomorrow, but uh, I'll bring you along for that. But um, yeah, things are coming together, and uh, it's turned out to be um, pretty cheap. So, well, I shouldn't say cheap. Material building material wise has been pretty cheap because uh, everything I've used so far has been leftover whatever. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of excited about this. Now I just gotta execute it and get the shit put together. So I finally got around to uh, hooking up this Terratech board which is gonna control the, uh, the elevator. And um, first thing I gotta do is uh, update the uh, software because I bought it back in November. So. Um, if I go to my settings, this is pretty cool because you operate everything off of your, um, you know, your phone or your tablet or whatever. So if I do go to my internet settings and I click on Terror Tech, it finds it. Hopefully, there we go. And then I can go to my internet and refresh that. Yeah, and this is all the information that's on the board. So right now it says I'm on version 1.1.2, and he said there is a 1.2 out there. So I need to update my software, which um, I'm not sure how to do. Servos, relays, wireless, updates. How about that? Update the TerraTech control board. Yep, let's do that. What? Oh, um, I guess my Dropbox. Unable to load folder. Okay, well that sucks. So, um, where else can I go to? More. Well, I didn't like that. So, I don't know. I can't imagine photo library. No, that's stupid. All right, well, I'm gonna play around with this and get this thing updated so we can uh, play around with this some more. All right, so I finally figured out how to uh, update the uh, firmware. So I'm going to connect back to this. And I quickly played around with the um, um, 
programming here, writing the scripts and everything. So as you see here, I started one with for the uh, elevator. And if I click on this, and I just put in four little scripts for what uh, three of the eight relays. So if I go and I press preview script. Yeah, so it works. Um, one thing I'm trying to figure out right now, it, it's only allowing me to do to the um, one second increments. Like I can't do, you know, 3.5 seconds to 4.25 seconds. It's, uh, it's, it's got to be a, a single digit, you know, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, whatever. So um, I think there's a way when I was at Midwest, um playing and and we're talking to the guys um they were able to put in you know fractions of a second so um that's the next thing i need to uh play around with um talk to those guys see if we can't make that make this one do the same thing so anyway um yep got the board that's gonna control this guy and uh next i need to start uh, playing with the um the video that i'm gonna make for the uh for the uh the screen so here at work um we get a bunch of these uh osb panels in on pallets and stuff like that you can see and uh this is what i'm going to use for the uh for the walls skinning the walls with and then i had this idea where we have a whole bunch of these real thin pieces of um I guess, I guess it's MDF. It's probably like an eighth of an inch. I got a whole bunch of these. And I was thinking about um, painting these up to look like, uh, you know, rusty steel panels. And then just kind of like patching them on the walls to make it was, look like, it, you know, just a bunch of random panels that make up the, uh, the skin of the walls. I got a couple other big four-foot sheets over here. So I thought that would be kind of cool. So, yeah, once we uh, get the walls built, then I can start to... Uh, messing around with that stuff. Well, that's upsetting. That's the glue that I bought to put down the plastic laminate on the uh, on the floor. And it got squished underneath the bottom of it. I forgot it was sitting there. Crap. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess I gotta get this cleaned up. So a couple days ago, I posted a picture of this up on uh, Haunter's Hangout, and uh, I got quite a few comments about how um, people didn't think that uh, this was going going to work. And um, um, yeah, as it sits right now, no, it probably would definitely fall apart. So I wanted to um, explain what exactly I'm I'm going to do here, and um, it's it's not done yet. So um, I think people thought that you know this is it, and this is what I'm going with. No, there's still still a lot more um, we have to do. So first off, um, a lot of people build their elevators so all the four corners are independent. You know, and they do this, and if you have that type of movement. Yes, you're certainly going to have a whole lot of twisting and torquing of the, the structure itself, which um, obviously if a, a structure like this it probably wouldn't hold up very, very long. What I'm going to do is mine these two bags and these two bags are going to be uh, connected to each other. So my movement is going to just do this and up and up and down and left and right. And that's it. So I'm not going to have a whole bunch of twisting and you know and stuff like that so um, I think with that kind of movement um, the amount of stress that's going to be on this structure is going to be a lot less than if it was you know all four corners were independent um, these little corner pieces here they're just temporarily I just I did that because I wanted to see how much travel I was going to have just the way it sat um, so it's kind of just a, a mock-up to see where it's going to be um, I actually already decided that I'm going to bump up these corners here um, another three quarters of an inch so and now we got the trash truck coming so now you can't hear me talk at all hi trash truck it never fails anytime I try to do a video there's some type of loud distraction or something but uh, anyway what was I talking about oh so yeah no this isn't done yet so I got some other structural stuff I need to put in I'm going to notch out all the way through the middle of this um, and then I'm going to put a uh, either another one by four or two by four that sits um, flush with the top here and um, um, that's gonna stiff you know tie all these together because this you know when when these bags are lifted so if you got 
say you got four people standing here, so you got about 800 pounds pressing down, and then you got these airbags that are pressing up, all your pressure is going to be right here in this corner. So I need to kind of try to distribute that um, that weight or that load across the rest of it. So putting that that 1x4, 2x4 is going to help do that. I'm also going to have some other um, cross braces up underneath it that will help stiffen it up as well. Um, in addition to that, this thing's going to want to have a tendency, since there's no, it's just on, you know, these rubber bags, it's going to want to have a tendency to drift side to side or front to back. So if you're familiar with like a four link system on a car, basically I'll have a, um, basically it'll be a rod attached to the base here and it'll come across and it'll attach somewhere to the, um, the structure and then there'll be another one coming this way and that'll keep it from, you know, wanting to drift back and forth or this way. So it keeps it so I only get this type of movement or up and down. So. Yeah, we still got a lot more work today. I know a lot of people uh, <laughs> people saw this and, and freaked out. It was like, calm down, guys. I'm not done yet. I'm just this is just the start. So, but um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll keep working on this and uh, and plug along and and for those of the uh, the new subscribers, gosh, there's probably about 20 or 30 of them that popped up uh, after posting this uh, this little picture. So, uh, welcome and um, yeah, we'll have some fun this summer. The good, the bad, the ugly, right? I'm so fucking annoyed with myself right now. So I used to be in the cabinet business, the mill work, all that for like 10 plus years. I know how to work with plastic laminate. And like a dumbass, I thought I could cut corners and instead of using like contact cement like you're supposed to use, um, I tried using this um, general all-purpose floor adhesive that you use for linoleum. And of course that shit didn't work. Why would it work? Uh, plastic laminate has a tendency to want to uh, coil up on itself. And that stuff doesn't set up fast enough to hold it down. So um, this piece of laminate that um, I tried cutting up, um, I did this last night. And of course I tried rolling it and everything and it, would, it just wouldn't, wouldn't lay flat. So I put as much weight and everything on it. This is last night. And so I pull it up and of course I got fucking bubbles and everything else now. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to salvage this because I really like the look of that, um, that silverish floor and then, you know, make it look rusty and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I mean, if I have to scrap it, I gotta scrap it. I'll be out like what a twenty dollar piece of plywood, I guess. So um, this is the only piece that I was managed to do. I still got what you know, two or three more pieces I gotta laminate. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. See, I don't even. I don't even know if that shit even if it even dries all the way. You know, some glues they stay somewhat um, you know tacky or something like that. Um, so I don't know. I'm pretty pissed off with myself right now, but hey, you know what? Uh, the moral of the story is if you know how to do something the right way, do it the fucking right way. Don't try to cut corners. Just do it right the first time and then everything will be fine. And then you're not putting yourself in this mess and then losing money on uh, having to buy more materials. So that's what happens. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Uh, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. It's going to be a fun summer, I swear. We're going to have uh, a lot of fun building this thing, and then we've got other props we've still got to do. Um, again, we're doing our, a walkthrough for the first time this year, so we got a whole lot of stuff coming up in the next few months. So thanks again for uh, stopping by, and uh, we'll check you on the next episode. See ya. Guys, we hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. Um, I'm not good at doing the, the heart-filled thank yous and blah, blah, blahs. So instead, let's just give shit away. How about that? Uh, if you remember back, well, only half of you would remember, back on the uh, 500 subscriber giveaway, um, Haunt Shirts um, hooked us up with uh, giving away a shirt to uh, one random um, subscriber. And since we have doubled our subscribers since then, it's only fitting that we give away two Haunt Shirts, right? So um, I'm gonna. I don't know how we want to do it. Last time we just did like a random generator of you know uh, picking um, a subscriber, and that was cool and all. But um, I think this time let's leave. I'm gonna have you guys leave down in the descriptions 
um, how you guys want to do the giveaway. Uh, if you want to do some type of contest or, or whatever, be creative. Because um, I'm not creative with doing this type of stuff. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys. How do you want to give away two uh, Haunt Shirts t-shirts? We can give two shirts away to one person or we can give two shirts away to two different people. So I don't care. Whatever you guys want to do. So um, Melissa and James are helping us out with the, uh, the Haunt Shirts um, giveaway again. So uh, yeah, leave a, down in the description how we should do the, uh, the giveaway. And... Um, uh, in the next episode, we'll pick one, and uh, and probably the episode after that, we'll actually select a winner or winners, s parentheses. So um, yeah, thousand subscribers. I can't believe that shit. So anyway, thank you guys for uh, watching all this shenanigans that uh, I put you guys through, and um, yep, we're gonna keep on rolling through it. So thanks, hunt shirts. Shirts, go see them. Get koozies and drink beer and buy t shirts. Get stickers and stuff. Thunder. Thunder now. Shut this off because I'm sounding like stupid.